We've got some normal news later in the video, but for now, I want to talk first on the main serious topic. Everything I'm about to talk on was learned from Drew or Midbeast's second IRL content channel known as Indoor Boy, and his original video, which will include all the details in depth, will also be linked in the description. I highly recommend watching the original video because I actually can't capture how shockingly bad this really was, and it also provides more context too. I'd also like to add I have Drew's personal permission to speak on this topic as we felt it was necessary to bring awareness to the dangers when traveling and also provide more context surrounding the situation. On September 2nd, earlier this month, Drew tweeted this, Life's been kind of good lately. Thinking I'll do a league boot camp somewhere and play 25 games a day to ruin it, alluding to a streamer trip. Then, the next day, he announced that with the support of Team Liquid, he would be traveling to Brazil to hit Challenge R from their Alienware training facility. The date range he spoke of was September 6th to the 21st. Earlier today, on the 19th of September, Drew posted this on his personal Instagram story. And when I saw this, I realized he seemed to be back home a little bit early and saying he was, quote, home safe was already not sounding too good. In the video, he speaks of an incident where, despite him being warned and thus careful with his actions, it was inevitable he'd have to use his phone in public. And thus, this unfortunately happened. There's no other tourists around. I probably should have went home. So I, I decided to go to the cathedral, quickly look up where the city started and the old buildings. Beautiful, by the way, beautiful. And I, I, I went to get uh, my Uber home. The whole time I had my phone in my underwear, not in my pockets, in my underwear, on my stuff. Wasn't bringing it out, wasn't running around, flopping it around or anything. Yes, obviously, you know, I'm a tourist and stuff. People can see that. Um, but I ordered the Uber, I put it back in my pants. I'm going to tell you guys, situ like, I look around. I'm looking around, scanning every time I'm in a place where I feel secure. As I know the Uber should be arriving, I, I grab it, look around. Look down, bang. I'm just struck, like with such a force, I couldn't believe. I don't really know, still don't really know where this person came from. I felt like the whole time I was being followed. I didn't really feel safe there. I could see people looking at me and like whist like doing things where I, I I knew I didn't feel comfortable. Um so I got the, I got the Uber out and bang, I'm hit. Phone's taken. Obviously it's unlocked. It's I I get it out, it just in it just unlocks, right? So they've got it unlocked. Um, the Uber arrives quickly after that. I don't, I could, I could barely even see the guy as he's going. He's going so fast, right? Just absolutely smash my phone on a bike. So myself, as a long-term viewer of him, could immediately tell how serious this actually was from his demeanor and his overall tone in the video. And some of the details he touches on in the later half of the video, like how the assailant started severing his communication with his support network and home, really hit how isolating and terrifying this situation must have been, especially in a foreign country. They then get access to the Apple ID, they start resetting things and stuff like that. I don't want to get in the nitty gritty. I myself, like I'm, you know, I'm not a complete idiot, it's a little bit of an idiot, but like not a complete idiot. I've got security and stuff, um, but they, they're, they're professional. This is what they do. And I can see they starting to get into banks. They can starting, to, all my emails are gone and I'm just panicking, right? Like I'm, what the hell do I do? I don't have a phone to call anybody. I don't have everyone back home I thought was asleep. Luckily I messaged my beautiful assistant who I live with, you know, you know, and she was awake and she, I, luckily she just starts spam calling all the banks and things like this to try and get ahead of it. But I noticed even in our line of communication, they were reading the messages and deleting my messages to her, deleting the messages coming in. So I, they were interrupting all of my line of communication and I couldn't recover anything because they have obviously my phone. I don't really have any, at that point, no way to call people. Um, and... I was starting to realize how bad of a situation this was. As we can tell, he is now back safely home in Australia, but a lot of his accounts are still attempting to be recovered. Midbeast isn't a stranger to traveling, being to basically every major league region and more, and has never had something of this severity occur. So I hope he can recover and it won't affect his future experiences. Again, please show him support on his video on his second channel and the one that's linked in the description below. Now onto some league related news. We're covering the pro invasion of the EUS server, highlighting some absolute dominance as a complete shift of pace. Shown on your screen from Tractive is a list of each IGN pro player attending worlds using while in Europe. And while pretty much everyone here is extremely impressive, some I'd like to highlight are 100 Thieves Quid, who is already at an insanely impressive 661 LP at 54 wins and 3 losses. 
I'm pretty sure he was even at like 40 wins or something and no losses at one point, only suffering his first defeat around 400 LP. Others to keep an eye on are basically the entirety of TL with every one of them at least master with a 90 plus percent win rate by Impact who's Diamond 1, but he only has one loss. There is a slight disclaimer though, um, a lot of the pros are obviously duoing, um, so their win losses will be skewed, but they're probably running into each other as well, so it sort of balances it out. If you want to keep up to date, the track diff link will be in the description. Up next, following his unfortunate denial to Worlds, professional legend Deft will be beginning beginning his mandatory service under the Korean military. On his personal Instagram, he left the fans with this message saying, I've learned, achieved and gained so much then, but if I had to give it all up and go back, I would, because you guys gave me so many happy and amazing memories. Thank you so much for that. I hope you guys always stay happy and healthy. I look forward to the day I can return and greet you again. As we can gather, in his concluding sentence, he does indeed plan on returning to League once his service is over, which I believe lasts around 18 months. The 27 year old should return to League of Legends still in his late 20s. Also, a comparison service that, as they're the same age, Faker was facing before he won gold at the 19th Asian Games for Korea, exempting him and his teammates of Zayas, Kanavi, Chovi, Rula and Keria as they achieved the National Pride Exemption under Arts and Culture. In the vein of world's news and not without controversy, mid laner for LNG Scout has been temporarily restricted from travelling and will be subbed in for by JDG Yagao. If Scout receives the okay to travel, he is required to attend worlds immediately under contract which will render Yagao ineligible. The controversy here comes because not only is Yagao replacing a Korean, it's under the the pretty common opinion that Yigao has been underperforming, sandbagging exceptional teammates Ruler and Kanavi, who didn't make it to Worlds at all. In their official press release, Riot said, quote, Utilizing an emergency substitute is an exceptional case-by-case -case decision and is never the preferred option when addressing roster-related issues. Each case undergoes a thorough review and approval process by Riot Games' competitive operations to ensure fairness. But as controversial as this is, imagine if that roster wins Worlds with Yigao as their mid laner, which I kinda would pay to see that to be honest. I'd also like to add here with surprise roster additions, Reckless will be appearing for T1 as their main roster substitute, which is super cool. As we see on the League Pick'em's website, Reckless makes his appearance here. I can only imagine this decision was reached due to his consistency with the academy team and also his international tournament experience. A T1 Reckless Worlds winner skin definitely isn't something I would have considered a few years ago, but I have really enjoyed seeing him succeed in Korea. And lastly today, Kasante is receiving his 31st rework since release. I'm not going to read out every change on your screen, you can pause if you'd like to because it is absolutely ridiculous, but of course the Kasante mains weren't happy, with this meme pulling almost 200,000 views and 10,000 likes. Anyway, that'll do us for the video today today. Thank you all so much for watching and we're almost reaching world's time so expect to see a lot of content coming in the next two months. See you in another news video very very soon and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye!